Welcome back, everyone, to On the Fly, a Financial Literacy Institute podcast. Today, I am joined by my co-host, Olyanka Famadou, and our guest of the evening, Madison Morgan. So, guys, how are y'all doing tonight? I mean, it's funny because we were just talking to Madison uh, uh, off camera before you got on, and we were just explaining how, you know, today was such a good day. And, you know, I was talking about today's Thursday. I love Thursdays because it's the Friday junior and we host our, you know, we usually shoot our podcasts on Thursday. I only have one class on Thursday. So for me, to answer that question, I'm doing great. Heck yes. I'm doing great too. Friday is the, is, a, is a nice day. So Thursday junior, I like that. Or Friday junior, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Absolutely. I'm glad to hear it, guys. So I guess a little bit of background before I kick it over to Madison to kind of introduce herself. So. Madison is a mechanical engineer, both like myself and then Yinka kind of, as he's a biomedical, it's basically mechanical with a little bit of a medical focus, but in essence, another engineer that we have here on our show. So I got to know Madison probably three or four years ago when I first started in the HVAC industry up here in Ohio. And Madison working as a consulting engineer at an engineering firm that we had a very good relationship with and still do to this day. So. I got to work on her on a few projects and kind of she taught me some things regarding HVAC design, regarding the industry. And ever since then, she's been, I guess, kind of like a mentor to me in terms of engineering and construction. And okay. along with that, though, she's had a little bit of a, a change of pace going from her initial consulting job to more of a contractor type consulting role and to her most recent endeavor starting her own consulting firm to be engineering so with that madison you've had you've had a hell of a ride over the past like two or three years so can you give our listeners a little bit of uh an understanding of how you started out and then what drove you to start your own firm man yeah you said 30 second or 10 minute answers. I don't know. This is a long one. No, <laughs> um, I, I guess even before I'm always looking for the next thing. I'm always looking to make things better. And I think um, I'm trying to find my place in this world, right? Like we all are. So I feel like um, it kind of started even before mechanical engineering. I actually was interested in biomedical during school at a time, a certain time. Um, I was halfway through, I had my first um, co-op at a manufacturing company. It's like, you know, this really isn't for me. So I looked into vet school. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what works for me. And uh, then I fell into uh, building systems engineering. And so it kind of combined my love for like architecture and old buildings with the mechanical and um, uh, like system design of mechanical engineering so they just fit together and uh this was my first consulting engineering job the hr manager and i hit it off at the career fair and um i was able to i have a, a great mentor uh at that company who really his passion for the business and for this industry like just radiated throughout so i was like wow you know this this is a career, this is stable, you can teach people this, you know, you, you're really making a difference in the world. So uh, that's what I stuck with after a couple of uh, other ideas. But um, from that point, trying to build, that's when I met Sean at that first company, building a base in, you know, what we do and creating blueprints for commercial building renovations. Um, I moved on to a larger company that was more on the contracting side. So they were actually installing the systems, uh, whereas before I was specifying them, but I really wasn't on the install side and understanding, you know, how do you actually put a building together? Uh, you learn it, but when you are working hand in hand with the people um, putting the pieces together, you really, you really get to know it uh, intricately. And from that point, uh, I started to be engineering so last year. So we've been in business just a year and a half, but uh, I don't regret it at all. It's been quite a ride, but uh, just it's just been an incredible experience. So that's how I got here. 
Absolutely. And you, you, you've made an impact with 2B engineering already in your short year and a half. So before we kind of dive into the purpose of your business and why you started it, I want to I want to cycle back to your time at Akron and even now the amount of, I guess, the involvement you have with the university. So what do you say, whether it's a class, a professor, an organization that made the biggest impact on you while you're at Akron? And then how do you stay involved with the university as a graduate and an alumni? Sure. So the professor that made the biggest impact, I don't remember his name. It was a controls design class, but it was 745 in the morning and people weren't showing up and he just stopped everything and kind of went to the front of the class and was like, look, I don't care if you come here or not. He's like, you're not going to remember me. You're not going to remember what I'm teaching you. But the reason you're here is to learn how to think and how to critically think and make decisions and kind of reason through things. And that, I, I don't know, for some reason, that morning, 8 a.m., that made such an impact and uh, just kind of drove me to realize, like, you know, I may not know what I want to do necessarily at this point in my career, but I know that this this degree and this um, university what will help me in whatever I try to do, right? So uh, to that point, trying to get more involved, once I found the co-op, the internship that I felt like I could make an impact, um, I started getting involved in ASHRAE, which is uh, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. <laughs> So preferably ASHRAE, but <laughs> uh, that networking, uh, again, my mentor at my first uh, internship in this industry, he said, you know, go out there, talk to people in the industry, get to know them, figure out where your place is. And through that organization, that's what I did. Uh, Sean, actually, I believe, ended up being the first president of the student ASHRAE chapter. So we were able to kind of bring the professional organization to Akron. That was the first time they've ever brought that organization there. So it's still going on today. I'm still involved uh, on the professional side, helping to grow the student chapter. And uh, I just, I think it's great. You know, the more people don't really know this industry that well, right? You don't really think, yeah, I want to become an HVAC engineer. You just kind of fall into it. <laughs> so I'd like to be able to share that with people, uh, you know, right when they get to Akron or whatever school they try to do, they they go to. Mm -hmm. No, this is good. This is really good. Uh, before I even ask my question, I just want to, if you guys see me rubbing my eye, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced where like one eye for some reason just like burns and like it's just doing that for some random reason. So if you see me going like this, that's the reason just getting the tear out. So nonetheless, no, this is awesome. I think it's because this podcast is that fire already. I think that's actually the reason. So no, see, it's interesting. And, and I love this story. And I want to actually capitalize on this certain question, be it that, you know, you're also an engineer and an entrepreneur. Um, be it that us two are also the same. I'm curious because you talked about, you know, how school, especially engineering, is really, um, you know, it's structured to help us or aid us in the way that we think, our thinking process, right? And I couldn't agree more, but I'm curious, can you maybe dive into that a little bit further, be it that you're not only an engineer, but also an entrepreneur? Because I think I've been telling so many people this. I, I'm not saying engineering is 100% for me. I can't really say that it is, but I'm doing it. I'm going to finish it. But I just love the way it makes me think. Right. And with the engineering mindset and the entrepreneurial mindset, there's really not a problem we can't solve. It's very interesting. So if you can elaborate a little bit on that, I'd be very intrigued to hear your answer. Yes, I agree with you completely. And holy smokes, it's helped in the in the entrepreneurial side. Just it's it's just asking questions. You just have to constantly ask, uh, you know, is is this the right answer or where do I need to go for this information or how does this work? or why those, I guess those are the big questions. How and why does something work? Um, and as a, as a as an entrepreneur that did not go through uh, a business degree or a finance degree, um, you're learning, you know, you know the basics of those those things, but when it comes to your business, you're you're constantly learning and getting information from people who have done it before, 
taking that and trying to see, you know, does that fit in my business or is that something I should avoid doing? You know, you're always kind of uh, just observing the world around you and seeing how you can take pieces and parts to make to make your progress better, I guess. No, you see, and, and I love that. And it's interesting because I, now I have a subset question that, and, and thank you for elaborating on that, is, uh, you know, I, I, I looked you up on LinkedIn before hopping on this meeting because I want to get to know you a little bit more, but I saw that you had a Dale Carnegie training, right? So I'm curious, right? What are you, are you, be it that you're an engineer, entrepreneur, right? Are you kind of in the realm of self-development as a whole? Do you tap into like the Dale Carnegie stuff? Maybe it's the training as, as clearly you tapped into. Maybe it's the book. Maybe it's certain podcasts. Maybe, you know, certain media that you listen to or, you know, watch on a daily basis. Are you tapped into that self-development realm as, again, an engineer and entrepreneur? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I, I love, love it. That let's question. hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> um, well, so for one, I'm always trying to solve problems. It doesn't matter. I'm, I... I listen well, and so I get told many problems, and I don't think they people always want them to be solved. This is just in general, but I'm always like, you know, this is what you could do. Here's what you could do to fix this. Here's what, you know, some suggestions, and I'm trying to start dialing that back a little bit, but I do love to solve problems. Um, and just, you're always, every day, you know, you wake up and you're like, okay, what can I do better? What can I do differently today? Um, and that's kind of what the Dale Carnegie course taught me, I guess the biggest thing, so I was, I was lucky to do that um, at my first company. I met someone at an ASHRAE event and he did the Dale Carnegie course. He had a, um, I guess, a sponsor for it and was like, here, I'll help support you in this, you know, talk to your company, see if they would help, you know, finish the, the support. And, I guess that's the other thing too. Never be afraid to ask questions. You know, you never know until you ask. You know, can we do this? Yes. Say that again, yeah. <laughs> if not, then okay. At least you ask. Um, so I was able to do this course, and to be honest, it was very. Everything they teach you seems to be common sense. You know, when you meet someone, ask about them. Smile. You know, kind of just have an aura that you are interested and you're just building relationships, right? Uh, the biggest takeaway I took from that course was learning how to be vulnerable. There was one session where we had to act out a uh, commercial and in front of everyone, we were all in a circle and uh, you got a script and you had to be as animated as possible. And you're like in the middle of this ring of people like on the ground, scrubbing something off and then like, you know, waving your hands in the air and yelling and, you know, whoever yelled the loudest, like it was very uncomfortable. You're around people that you have no idea. You've met them three times before this, but you realize everyone feels that uncomfortable. So if you just do it, <laughs> then people start to realize like, oh, you know, I can be vulnerable too. And you start to ask questions and you start to just be yourself and people really open up to that. I'd say that was my biggest takeaway. And I would recommend doing the, the Car Dale Carnegie course if you get a chance. And, and that's a big key to networking as well. Like you mentioned earlier, going in the career fair, as a, you know, a wide-eyed freshman or sophomore engineering student, you walk into the career fair and you're just blown away by how many companies are there and some very large companies and then some companies that you, you've never heard of, like those in the HVAC industry. But just having the the humility and even the confidence to just walk up to someone and start talking to them and give them an elevator pitch and be confident in the message that you're delivering that's that's a skill that takes a lot of time to learn and the career fair and networking events and trade shows are almost like a baptism by fire event for people that haven't done it that often so as we were mentioning a little bit about your personal development, would you say that in your in your day to day life, do you have any like habits or routines that you follow that help you stay focused, help you get your work done and maximize the efficiency of your time? Yes, I walk my dogs every morning at like 530 in the morning. <laughs> one loves it, one hates it, but they both get to go with me. <laughs> the other one would sleep till 10. But I, I think that really helps. I find myself, if I don't go on that walk, 
it just it doesn't mess up the day, but you can tell like, oh, you know, I didn't start the day the way I, I wanted to, you know. Um, honestly, it's like just just one small routine really helps, I think, just kind of set the pace for the day. <laughs> um, and I did want to touch on your comment about the career fair. Uh, because you're right, people, freshmen go to the career fair and even if you have an elevator pitch and you're very confident, you know, it's everybody there knows like these people, they have no idea what they're talking about. These students, this is their first time, you know, and it's awesome to see people just like being vulnerable and putting themselves out there. And uh, I actually spoke at an ACE mentor uh, meeting to high school students who are about to join um, or they're going into architecture or engineering school. And I shared with them what I've learned, you know, through networking and about being vulnerable and some tips, you know, on going to the career fairs and getting to know people. And it's just, it's nice to hear, to get feedback from that, right? Because as a young person, like I wish I had some of that. So I'm always trying to give back and see like, how can I help someone, you know, learn something that I didn't know at that age, right? So anyway, I don't know, it's just a tangent, but I think that was I love I love sharing what I've learned, I guess. 100 percent. And you, you think about it, too, from the perspective of those high school students, they see you as someone who's graduated college, who's a business owner, who's basically successful in life in a multitude of aspects. But for you being able to tell them that when I was your age, when I was in college, like I didn't have it figured out. I was scrambling. I had to just throw myself out there and hope something happened that was good. So I think that helps younger younger kids and younger students feel better about themselves and not think that they have to have it all put together immediately. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. I think it helps me too as a business owner because I also know that now I don't have to have it all put together right now. Like even the business, we're always evolving and it it's just, it's a good reminder for me too. Mm -hmm. that I, I I don't know everything and I never will, you know, so you're always trying to to build on what you do know. Thousand percent, thousand percent. See, oh, I love this. I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to stay in this space and I love this space. Right. So uh, if you're not familiar with you know our demographic, our demographic of our listeners tend to be, you know, our age, maybe five to ten years uh, above us and five to ten years below us. Right. So we have some college students, high school students and a little bit of, you know, post college or, you know, in, in their early to mid 20s. Right. So. My question for you is we were just talking about knowledge about, you know, what you like, we can't we can't know everything back then. Maybe you would wish that back then you knew what you knew now. But there are some listeners that if they took your advice that you're about to drop on them, they could actually know what you know at that age that you wish you knew that. Right. So I guess my question is, what is some what are, what's some good advice that you wish you knew at your age that you could give that you like you just said you would love you'd love to give out value, love to give out information that you would love to give to you know our younger audience. Oh, putting me on the spot, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my advice would be, honestly, ask questions. Always ask why and how. If you don't ask that, you're just going to continue on the path that you see in front of you where you could say, why am I doing this? You know, and you may not know at the time, but at least you're asking and at least you're trying to figure out a different way to um, to move forward. I don't know. Just I, I just think vulnerability and not being afraid. You know, everyone's got questions. It's like when we were seven and I've, I've gone and spoke to, I actually love speaking to uh, grade school students because you ask a question, you say, what is an engineer? And you get like 20 hands raised and they're like, a uh, water engineer uh a uh, toy engineer uh i'm gonna make ice cream and you're like yeah all those yeah. are engineers right you can like slap you can definitely engineer on anything yeah <laughs> and then at some point you get to like high school and college and especially now like even at ashray events it's like you rarely get questions and it's just i don't think people want to be vulnerable they don't want to ask the question that's stupid right but you know everybody's thinking that question it's hard, you know, I, there's That's times weird. that I don't ask the questions and then I leave and I'm like, dang, I, why didn't I do that? 
it, so. it, it's funny you say that too because oftentimes if we don't ask a question we're going to regret it more than if we did ask the question and right. something something too i want to touch on you mentioned that you speak to or you go and talk to elementary school kids i think with younger kids it's it's like a prime time where you can tell how they're parented because when we're all like two three years old we first learn to talk it's just a question after question why this why that like we're, we're, we're constantly hammering our parents down with that and you can tell certain kids were parented to where their parents told them don't ask this don't ask why and and you can tell from those kids because they often are quieter and they're not asking those questions and it carries out into their adult life so i think that's yeah even getting into the parenting realm, that's that's crucial to not kill curiosity of small children early on because it can have enormous dividends later. Yeah, that's a good point for sure. And so, also teach your kids how to handshake. Mm, absolutely. Handshake, <laughs> handshake is the best first impression. But uh, I want to switch gears here a little quick. So our the focus of FLI and the Financial Literacy Institute in general is financial education. So into your both personal and business experiences, what has, I guess, how do I phrase this? What are what are some of the financial strategies that you use and what is your biggest knowledge focus financially? Like, I guess, where are you trying to gain the most financial knowledge? Uh, so strategies that I use, um, mostly self-taught and research, um, on Google and talking with other business owners to see how they set things up. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I guess recently I talked with an architect. I've been um, billing every month. So, you know, we're working. I've got two salaries to to pay, but I don't bill for the work we do until like every four weeks, right? But I pay every two weeks. So the architect suggested, um, why don't you bill every two weeks? You know, then you have a, more of a steady income and it's like just simple changes like that. You know, it's an easy to implement. So that's something now that I'm trying to do. Um, but again, I'm always, nothing is static. Everything is, you know, let's, we're trying it this week and it's working great, but like, is there a way to make it better or should I be changing something? Um, I'm actually reading, I am curious, have you guys ever read Profit First? I'm reading that right now. Uh, I've not. It's in my digital library, actually. So I <laughs> so it's, to read it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually listening to it now, but it was recommended to me by a couple people and it kind of changes the way you think about your cash flow. So instead of having everything, everything comes into one bank account uh, and then you disperse your money wherever you need to from that bank account. Typically, this method, everything comes into one bank account and then you allocate percentages to like four other accounts. So you always know and you name them appropriately um, and you always know you look at your bank statement and you're like, okay, all these five accounts are in the same bank statement. I know exactly where my cash is at. Uh, I haven't implemented yet, it yet, but I'll let you guys know if I do and how that works. But uh, yeah, so just always, always researching and networking and talking to people. Okay, okay. And I and I just added that book to my uh, Amazon card as well. So I'm going to get that one too. And we'll, we'll share stories about it and strategies. Sweet. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And so now you know, this is good. And, and I wonder too, I see how this is good. I, I love, I love them about to ask the question, right? So in that same vein, but now how about even personal finance, right? Because that was more of the business side of it. How about like the personal side of it? Maybe you're, you know, taking advantage of you might have to correct me on this. I know if you're working for a company and you're, you're maybe a regular worker, it's 401k, right? But there's some sort of 401k as a, you know, an entrepreneur, or as a business owner, that might be something you can talk about, or maybe, you know, you're focusing on other, you know, sources of investments, maybe it's HSA, maybe it's, you know, uh, Roth IRA, maybe it's real estate, whatever that means to you, but more on the personal side, what kind of tips uh, or tricks or even strategies do you use in, uh, on that personal side of it? Yes. And nobody learns financial literacy in school 
and it's That's very why we're frustrating. Here. Oh. <laughs> um, so my dad actually his like uh, passion and purpose in life is to share and teach people, um, basically that financial literacy and investing. And so, growing up, um, he wrote. I'll share this with you guys too. He wrote a document for um, investing in the stock market, and. Um, I've learned that over time, certainly the last, I would say, seven years, um, really started to get more into it and kind of understand, you know, you're looking at investing, it's just, it's a scary thing, right? People don't want to invest in the stock market because it's uh, a risk, I guess, um, which it is risky, right? But if you research the companies, you know, and you track the company's financial statements and understand how um, healthy the company is, you know you're buying a good investment. You're not buying a risk, right? So uh, I would, I'd be happy to share with you his, um, he does a weekly newsletter and bi-weekly Zoom call. It's all free, right? He just, he wants to share this with people. So yeah, we'd love I to would, have that information. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so it was, I don't know, I just kind of dove into one aspect of that, but I, I do think that's really important to find ways that your money can work for you. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the stock market, but if you're more comfortable, you know, with mutual funds or real estate or anything, because you want to be able to outlive your money, right? Yeah, no, 100% ideally. And so even in that, in that, um, you know, respect, what is maybe the key thing that's helped you the most from your father's teachings? The key thing that has helped me the most, man. Um, ooh, I don't know. So he's it, honestly just learning, right? You know, just just always learning and understanding uh, what what you're looking at, I guess. <laughs> um, so I I don't know. He the biggest thing that he taught me was to make your money work for you, I suppose. And he's shared some ways to do that. Um, so you're always trying to kind of manage your expenses and your income so that one is the former is not greater than the income, but. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, making your money work for you and the thing that we always say is time in the market beats timing the market 100% of the time. So yeah. just having having your money in there and not trying to play trends, not trying to buy and sell quickly to try to make a quick buck. It's you, you're in this for the long game and that's and that's the biggest goal of investing. And not only are you investing in the stock market, investing in funds and tax advantage accounts, but you also have your business as, as an investment as well. So like Madison mentioned, there's real estate, there's a stock market, there's businesses. There's, I would say, tens of maybe even 20, 30 different ways that you can invest money and you can get creative with it. So it's not a one size fits all strategy. And absolutely, Madison, you were you were blessed to have your dad who takes that very seriously and has shared a lot of knowledge with you. So we're definitely excited to check out his newsletter and, and see what what he's talking about and maybe even ways that we can implement that with FLI. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to get into one last thing before we get close to wrapping up here. So in terms of 2D engineering and how you started that about a year and a half ago, what is what is your long-term vision for 2B? I would like to support underrepresented people in construction. Um, I would like to grow the company. Um, I have some ideas on how I would like to structure it moving forward. Uh, I don't think that it will be the typical consulting engineering structure of several principals and then associates and then engineers. So I have some ideas, but ultimately I really would like to share this industry 
with others and kind of create a more um, diverse space in engineering and construction itself, uh, because I do feel that it's lacking in diversity. Yep, you're 100% true, or you're 100% right. And I guess on that note too, speaking of diversity in the industry, being a woman in engineering and in the construction industry, along with being a firm owner, how has that impacted you in your life? So I will say in general, being a firm owner, you are, it tend to be listened to a little bit more I just because of that title. I feel like I don't know that that means anything for being a man or a woman or, or anything. Um, but sorry, what was the other question? <laughs> um, just, just how that has made an impact on you and even the people that you hire and the people that you interact with on a daily basis. Okay, so I don't, I won't say too much, but um, certainly it is being a woman in construction, you don't have, I didn't realize it at first that um, how important it is to have a mentor that uh, looks like you or, or comes from a similar background. And when I first started, I kind of, brush that off you know I, I was like oh you know you, hey, we're all doing the same thing it's all performance based it's all you know doesn't matter who my mentor is but as I moved on and as I've met women and as I've um gone through several uh just um issues at companies uh, I realize that it's really important to have a support s system behind you that um truly supports you and that you feel really comfortable talking to and sharing your experiences. And I know some women that have left the industry because they didn't have that. And uh, that really hurts because I don't, I don't think that should be a reason for anyone to, to stop doing what they, what they love and what they've prepared so much for. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great too, that you have that support structure and that you're openly reaching out to other engineers and female engineers to help them build that support structure. Because I have noticed, given my short time in the industry too, we're seeing more and more female engineers coming in. And it's it, it's trending away from being a male-dominated industry, which I feel like is necessary just for the overall health of the industry long-term. So yeah, thank you for everything you've done with that as well. So as as kind of we wrap up here, we have we have a few common questions that we like to ask all of our guests. Can I ask one question though? Really yes. quick. Yes. I love it. I love it. Thank you. So this is looming in my head, and I just want to want to swing back to the conversation of you know you and your father and that and that relationship. And I just I just love because we don't we rarely not only do we rarely have engineers, engineers who are also entrepreneurs, engineers that are entrepreneurs that had you know a family member teach them finance. Like you're rare. So I love that. This is great. So I want to I want to tie all those three together in this last question, right? So or at least the, the third, um, the, the the latter of the three. So I'm curious, right? Um, you'll see where I'm going with the question after I ask the question. If you don't mind me asking, do you have kids or do you plan to have kids? I do not have. I have two dogs. They, they oh, count. you have two dogs. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. I'll okay. Kids. That's awesome. No, this is awesome, and I'm, I'm glad. No, that's awesome. I I love that. Right. So my question for you is th to see how an amazing impact your father's had on you teaching you a multitude of other things uh, not just finance but so many other things right but i'm gonna stick on the finance one right be it that's the theme of yeah fli but i'm curious like how whether it's you know biological or adopted which is awesome i love that how would you plan to maybe set up your future children uh like financially right so whether it's Maybe you got your UTMA, the 529 UGMA, or maybe it's even like, you know, teaching them budgeting. How would you plan to pass down the knowledge that your father's passed down to you to keep that knowledge going? And the reason I ask this is one of the things I'm finding, finding so much value in with FLI is that when we impact people and we teach them like finances or personal finance, I think we've come to understanding that we're not just teaching them because they see the impact set on them and now they're going to teach their kids. 
and now their kids are going to teach their kids. And it's like, when you think about it like that, I don't care how many single number you see uh, one follower up on YouTube or Instagram. I don't care. That one follower, you have to multiply that by the generations because now that impact is teaching kid by kid by kid, right? So my question, again, still stands is what do you plan to do um, for your, your your future children, how you, you know, in teaching them this wonderful knowledge that, you know, your father has bestowed upon you? Yes, teach them everything. Um, number one, read to them every night. Well, small children and I guess any children. But uh, number two, I would say that I would try to teach them more than and be more involved in finances um, earlier. So I I got the document on investing. I got, you know, all, he wrote it when I was young, but we never really talked much about it until I was older, right? Like 18 and up. So I would like to start kind of ingraining that. So it's hard to, it, it was hard to, to um, get into a habit of it at first because I wasn't doing it from an early age and I wasn't seeing the, the benefits of it you know, until I really started to be using money, right? Um, so I would say I, I definitely would be sharing that information and trying to to make maybe a game of it more than some, than a chore, right? Because people will do things that they enjoy over things that they find chores. So if you can make it interesting and fun, uh, all the better. Great question, Yinka, and great answer, Madison. So as as we roll into our, our final questions here, and Madison, feel free to answer these in about uh, 30 seconds or or less than that. But uh, what is your number one goal for 2023 as we roll into the new year? My number one goal for 2023 is, oh, what? Really? <laughs> can, I, can you ask the next question <laughs> first? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll let you, we'll let you ponder that for a sec. So we'll roll on. What, if you had to recommend one book that anyone who's in high school or college and just starting out should read, what book would that be? Okay. I have the answer to the first question and that is to take a vacation. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> where? And, I'm curious where, um, or just any vacation. I Preferably it would be out of the country, but Ooh, awesome. um, yeah. And I actually may have that in the works to your you hopefully. Go. So there you go. Awesome. I just got to keep it going. OK, and then can you repeat the second question? <laughs> yes. Sorry. If, if, if you had one book, whether it's personal finance, business, mindset, anything, it, it doesn't matter. What book would you recommend to someone who's just starting out in life? Holy smokes. Um, a book that I would recommend to someone just starting out. Man, so I just keep thinking of the books that I've been reading lately. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it this has nothing to do with finance, so I don't I don't know. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> OK, OK. Um, so we'll, we'll jump on to the third question then, and then you can think about number two. And this is this is another deep philosophical question. What would you say your purpose in life is? Man, <laughs> all right, the book, I'm going to just throw it out there as profit first, because I do wish I had that a long time ago for personal finances as well, just to think about how everything works. Um, and one more time, give me the last one again. I keep thinking of the <laughs> thir of the answer to the whatever. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. So what would you say your purpose in life is? You don't find out your purpose until the end. <laughs> that, that's you know we haven't heard that before, so that's a that's a great answer. So absolutely, and I think I think your purpose evolves as time goes on too. Yes, yes. And then lastly, I want to give you one bonus question, but I'll throw it over to Ginka to uh to give the bonus question. Well, I mean, if it's the bonus question that I think you're that I think you would ask, it's really where can our listeners find you? Because again, you're an amazing guest, and we appreciate you. Super unique in a multitude of areas. And if our you know our network and our listeners want to reach out to you, what is the best form um, or even multiple forms for our listeners to reach out to you? Man, people can reach out any way: cell phone, email, LinkedIn, website. 
show up in my house, whatever you want to do. Okay. I am open. What's your website? <laughs> it is uh, www.twob, as in boy, engineering.com. I have to. Www.twob, engineering.com. Yes. To be awesome. engineering with the two spelled out. That's awesome. Okay, cool. And I can confirm her LinkedIn is her name. So I'm going to be connecting with you after LinkedIn. So we're <laughs> looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, Madison, we appreciate you. And I just want to personally thank you because, you know, super unique in so many areas. And I'm excited to connect with you. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Inka. And Sean, thank you. This is awesome. And Inka, where can our listeners find you on social media? Yeah, I mean, if they, if they haven't found me already, um, I'm really only just on LinkedIn. I don't have a lot of personal social media, so you can find me at Ole Inca Famadu on LinkedIn. And my uh, first name has a little dot under it, so that's how my name is spelled. But if you look up Famadu, most likely you will find me. So you can find me on LinkedIn there. How about you, Sean? You can find me at Sean Lacey 7 on all social media platforms. Check me out on LinkedIn at Sean Lacey. You can also check out my detailing business website, Luxury Auto Detailing Ohio. Get your car cleaned up during the winter. My, my shameless plug for that. But also check out thefli.net where you can see our blog articles, our podcasts, our free tools. You can sign up for an account, whether it's a free or paid account, and get into our financial accountability coaching yes. program, uh, which we, we have just that. started to roll out in October, November. And there's always more coming on the website, more coming on social media. But in closing, Madison, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the knowledge that you shared. And I think I've learned not only about you, but I've also learned about more about business, about education, about engineering. And I, I think that the biggest theme of this episode was that the time you put in to give back to others and to share what you've learned and to help the younger generation really fits into the culture and like the core values of us here at FLI too. So we we really enjoy talking to people and networking with people that have like my or that are like minded and that have the same vision and idea for life. So you know we appreciate your time. We appreciate everything that you shared. Yinka, do you have any closing comments? Again, just last thing I want to say is just I appreciate you again. I thank you, and I'm just super, uh, you know, looking forward to connect with you. And hopefully, we can have you on a, a future podcast in, in in the future, kind of see you know where your engineering firm is taken, and uh, obviously you'll see where FLI is you know taking taking place in the next couple of years. But yeah, again, we just yeah. want to thank you so much. So we appreciate you. Thank you, and I'm glad to to now know FLI. So I will be uh, looking that up and getting involved. Um, I do have one suggestion for a question at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, okay would just be who would you recommend reaching out to for the next show, the next podcast? Okay. I don't know if you've thought about that, but um, I'll, I'll like that. something what to would, consider. What would your answer be? <laughs> yeah, what would your answer uh, be? Certainly Dwight Morgan, my Dwight dad. Morgan. Absolutely. <laughs> That's interesting. I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, oh, we got to have her father on the show now. <laughs> this is awesome. But yeah, I mean, you connect, it, you connect uh, us with his information, whether it's that document, or even, you know, um, his, his meetings that he does bi-weekly that you said. Um, no, that would, that would be awesome. So any information, we would love to, you know, talk to him and then potentially have him on the show. I think that would be pretty cool. For sure. I will yeah, do that. Thank Absolutely. Thank you again, Madison. Thank you, Yinka. And this has been another episode of On the Fly, a Financial Literacy Institute podcast. Y'all have a good night. Thanks, guys.